And there he goes. We lit. Sir, we are lit. Look. We live. Again, for the praying. second time. We are praying and manifesting a good signal. We are praying and manifesting a great live today. For sure. Yeah, they, they tried to play us last time, bro. I didn't appreciate that. They was they really played us, they, Yes, they played us for real. We was dropping gems, bro. That's why. They didn't want to see it. We they hate dropping, to see it, bro. We were dropping hella gems, but you know what? We're gonna we're, we're back this time and we're gonna go ahead and just keep dropping them gems like it didn't happen. So last week we were gonna forget about last week and just worry about today. Come Come on, like now. I always say when I start off every live, I like to say how are you living, man? How's everything going with you? Oh, everything is everything, bro. It's a great week. Um I, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I'm I'm like slowing down, uh -huh. you know, so people at the end of the year do two things. Yeah. They either go super hard because they want to finish strong or they like yeah. chill because I've been working hard all year. Like <laughs> I've been working hard all year, so I'm going to chill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, you yeah. know? So I'm taking these next two weeks to legitimately relax, bro. I have been nonstop since like June, July. Mm -hmm. I've taken at least... 16 17 flights so you know between traveling appointments speaking engagement i'm tired you know i've been burning myself at both ends so yeah. listen if somebody called and they want to buy something <laughs> that's cool but other than that i'm chilling exactly <laughs> well you know i appreciate it I, I must be i must be someone special man i guess we really are bros if you took the time out to really be on for today hey, i ain't got nothing else to do bro <laughs> let's, let's do it got so i'm gonna take it back to the time i feel like we met i believe we met it was at and homie fix the screen we met at, I believe, at um, BYOB, Build Your Own Brand. Was that a convention yep. that happened? Had to be. Now, I remember yep. being there. I right, come on, wine. Look, I got my water, H2O. Oh, let me get this. That's what this okay, is. You, it's water. you know what? It's, I got to start getting into my wine. It's flavor water. It's flavor oh, okay. water. That's what it is. Yeah. All that's, right. That's like what I'm going to call my wine from now on. Flavor water. water. <laughs> right. The wine. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. <laughs> but yes, we met each other at the BYOB event. And I remember meeting you. I think our, our, our both our energies is connected. And you were in a suit. I mean, you were suited up. And it was a formal event, but you were just at the next level of suit yeah, and tie. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. everybody was passing out business cards. And you told me, you said, you know, I'm a, I'm a young millennial out here doing my thing. And I, I tailor suits. And I was like, okay. Because the way his suit was looking, that's okay. He stares about this. And we connected. <laughs> right. And ever since, we've been following each other on Instagram and keeping up. So now we're able to, you know, become full circle and you yeah. know, here today for tonight's live. So yeah, I'm, yeah, and I and I appreciate you reaching out too, bro, because that was, I believe, that was two years ago. Yeah, that was that was a while ago. Yeah, it was not it was not recent. So it's not like we just connected, man. I've really been keeping up with your journey. You've been doing your thing, bro. Appreciate so, it. Man. So sh shout out to you. <laughs> for real. But I tell people, we got. I've been on my humble grind. We call it the humble grind right now. Facts. Because Facts. this year has definitely been a humbling year, I would say. But. Enough about me. Let's get into you, about your dapper lifestyle. Let's go ahead and tap into it. So when did you, um, you know, get interested in fashion? When did you start taking fashion seriously? Were so, you always the guys interested in suit or it had to yeah. go? Yeah. So I think, I think um, you know, maybe people on this live may have missed the last one or maybe not. But I've always had an interest in fashion. Okay. Um, and it doesn't come from my family. It never came from my friends. Um, you know, growing up, I wasn't surrounded by you know, custom clothing years or mm -hmm. designers, um, social media influence, you know, like that wasn't a thing, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we had a mall and that was it. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> that was it. But I used to just draw inspiration from magazines. I used to draw inspiration from watching movies, watching TV. And um, I always wanted to present myself to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't always suits, you know, but I've always liked to stand out. So that may have been like graphic tees. That may have been sweater vests and bow ties. Whatever it is. But if uh -huh. everybody else was going left, I'm trying to go so far right. That's right. That I make my own lane. And um, that's what I've always been known for, man, since high school. And so when I went to college, I uh, joined the organization. And one of our pillars was image busting, mm -hmm. right? And this is around the time of, like, the whole Trayvon Martin situation, you know, the Eric Garner situation. This thing, like, every month, yeah, there was another hashtag, right? Yeah. And so the goal is to show people that a man can be well-dressed outside of going to court, mm -hmm. outside of going to work, outside of going to a funeral. And so when people, you know, people used to tell me all the time and say, oh, my gosh, you look so nice. You must have a job interview. 
Like, huh? I can't just. It's speak. like it's like nah, bro. This, this is just my character. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That 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 became my answer. This is my character. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I went from wearing suits on Mondays to wearing suits on Mondays and Tuesdays, and then it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it was Monday through Friday, and I just brand myself as the suit guy. That's a um, suit guy. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's, like you said, it became a lifestyle for you. So you were that guy probably in college that was always wearing suits. Every day. Like, Every day. Even, even now, even right now, as we speak, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, own, I own one hoodie that I just bought last week. <laughs> I have okay. one hoodie. Uh -huh. I have one pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. And I have three pair of sneakers. Wow. That's it. Other than that, it's straight dress clothes. So to this day, every single day, it's always been dress clothes. It's straight dress clothes. Like, like right now, I'm dressed down. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is me dressed down. Uh -huh. uh, like, whenever you see me with no tie, I'm dressed down. Dressed down, okay. You know what I'm saying? When I got a tie on, I'm dressed up. Dress but, okay. you know, even dressed down is still a suit and dress shirt. Even dressed uh -huh. down is still, a, you know, slacks and a polo. You know, you can be casual and still be fly. Yeah. Still be high fashion, still be high style. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, bro. All right, man. So look, so we know we know if he if he has on button, he's dressed down, he's chilling, drinking his wine. This is when me chilling. On, he is suited and booted, and he's dressed up. Yep. Yes, sir. So you Let's decided. Um, to, I know. I know. Like, I know. I know. This is like an interview style too, right? Yeah, this is like an interview style. Yeah. But but for the people who are in here, if y'all have any questions, like yes. you know, we both believe in servant leadership. Yeah. So if y'all want to know anything about. Uh, entrepreneurship or you know starting a clothing company or Anything. social media like literally just ask so i just want to throw that out there bro you yeah know, so y'all see the rocking. question tool right down there any questions you have yeah. before we end i'll make sure i answer a few questions for him before he gets off the live but you hit right into you hit me right in the nail entrepreneurship so you are a full-time tailor when did you decide to go ahead and take that risk and decide to become full-time did you have a job before or you just was doing this from the jump yeah, yeah, I had a job before for sure. Uh, <laughs> I'll see if I got time to get into the story. So, <laughs> so I talk a lot of shit about jobs, uh -huh. but I don't have anything against jobs. Jobs yeah. make the world go around. People need to be employed. Businesses need to be making money. Uh, I do have something against jobs that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. That's my beef, mm -hmm. right? So let me be very clear about that. I have something against jobs that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Um I believe if there's something you want to do in your life, you should get a job, career, or internship in that field. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, it's just a, it's a waste of time. Like, you're literally yeah. there to collect a check. That, in my opinion, is a dead-end job. So you want to be in real estate, but you serve in an olive garden. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you want to learn to, you know, be in the stock market on Wall Street, but, you know, you work in retail. Like, it, it got to make sense. Like, uh -huh. your job should be in line with the the direction that you want to go in your life, mm -hmm. right? You should be learning things at work that you can use outside of work, uh -huh. even if it's just building relationships. So uh, I, knew, I knew back in 2016 that I wanted to start my own custom suit company, but I had no idea how to get started. Uh -huh. So in my mind, the smart thing to do is, yo, get a job working retail. That way you can start to learn the system. You can mm -hmm. learn the process. You can learn how to take measurements. You can learn about fabric. You can, mm -hmm. you know, uh, really, really start to build your business. And so I got a job working retail, bro. So I worked at Brooks Brothers for about a year and a half. And then I worked at Coach and Cole Hunt. Okay, uh, Coach. When I left there. Yeah, bro, I hated working at Coach, bro. Really? <laughs> That's a high-end store. Man, look, what I tell you, but, but I'm, I'm in the menswear, right? And I worked in a uh -huh, store. True. Coaching, so yeah. they like, yo, you got to know the bag. You got to know uh -huh. the different level. I'm like, bro, I don't <laughs> care. I just want the suit and tie and that. Yeah. Bro, the store was like 85% women, 15% men. Uh -huh. And you know, the men's stuff was like real basic, but they wanted to learn everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, they throw us <laughs> in the little corner. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't go. So, uh, yeah, left there. Uh, went to uh, Men's Warehouse. And I only worked there for a short period of time before I got recruited by Suit Supply. And Suit Supply was my last job. And I haven't been there since March of 2018. So, so that's when you just... So how did you it. know for sure that this is my time? I'm going to go ahead and take that leap of faith. Because a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs. A lot of people want to start an old clothing line and want to take it full time. So 
wouldn't you know for sure that you were stable and your mind was right to know that, okay, I'm going to risk this nine to five and take this for the rest of my life? Never going to be stable, bro. Never okay. going to be stable. Uh, I don't care how much money you save. I don't, mm-hmm. what, what bothers me is the fact that people are like, oh, you need to eliminate all your debt. You uh-huh. need to save six uh-huh. months worth of bills. You need to <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's like, damn. It's, it's, it's almost as if people wait for like the stars to line up. Uh-huh. That will never happen. Okay. There is never a perfect time to leave your job. There is okay. never a perfect time to leave your nine to five. It's always going to be uncomfortable because you're losing security. Mm-hmm. Like when you're a full time entrepreneur, bro, ain't no, oh, I get paid every uh, two Fridays. No, no, I don't get paid on the first and the 15th, bro. Like, Wow. You eat what you kill. And so every single day is a hustle, right? And what I what I will say about the situation is sometimes God will move you, right? If you mm-hmm. don't do it yourself. Sometimes God will move you. So even though I was ready to leave my job, I didn't have the courage to, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it's scary, man. Like they call it a leap of faith for a reason. Like you're literally yes, taking a leap of faith. Like it ain't no joke. Um, so for those of us who have ever worked retail, if you work retail, they have what's called the conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. So let's just say I work at this mall and I sell suits. I cannot work in another store at the same mall that sells suits. It's a conflict of interest. Interest. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so when I was working at suit supply, they actually found out that I had my own custom clothing company on the side. Oh, so you were trying to do something on the side real quick. Yeah. Up. So <laughs> while I'm working, so 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 while I'm working, right, I'm taking this check and I'm using that to get my LLC. I took this uh-huh. check and I got garment bags. I took this yes. check, I got hangers. I took this yes, check, sir. I got mannequins. I took this check, I got rolling racks, you know? So while I'm working, I'm building my business on the side. So one so one day a customer comes in the store. I'm gonna try to make this quick. One day a customer comes oh. in the store and he's like, Yo, I'm flying to California for a business meeting. I need a suit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, when do you leave? He's like, I leave in two weeks. Oh. He's like, I wanna he's like, I want a custom suit. Uh-huh. Now, custom suits at suit supply take six weeks. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, you know, unfortunately, like we don't have enough time to make you something custom, but I would be more than happy to, you know, show you some stuff off the rack. Uh-huh. So, Help you out with a little shortcut. Yeah. So we try on a suit and he's like, oh, I don't like it. Try on another suit. Uh, I don't like it. Try on another suit. Oh, I don't like it. And we go through seven suits. He's like, man, I want to go custom. I'm like, uh-huh. bro, we don't have time. He speak, Dude, come on, the entertainment to kick in. Yeah, and so we go back to the rack, and I try on three or four more, and he's like, nah, man, I want to go custom. I'm like, you know what? Mind you, I spent like two hours with this guy. I'm like, mind uh-huh. you, you know what? I, I know a guy that can make a custom suit in two weeks. He's like, okay. well, well sh- why didn't you say that a long time ago? <laughs> so I give him the number. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, call this person, tell him you need a suit in two weeks. Mind uh-huh. you, it was my number. Come you know on, you better go I'm, ahead and you know, brand I'm, yourself I'm, I'm type shit. So <laughs> it's my number that I give him. Uh-huh. And so he calls the next day and he's like, hey, uh, I just left uh, suit supply yesterday and I was giving your information and told that you can make a custom suit in two weeks. I was like, yeah, I'm the guy that gave you the card. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. So let's meet so we can get the process started. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like, where do you want to meet? He's like, it doesn't matter. You choose. So I recommend this cigar lounge down the street. Uh-huh. And so he's like, wait, why are we meeting at a cigar lounge? I'm like, so I can show you fabric and take your measurements. Uh-huh. He said, he said, why aren't we meeting at suit supply? I said, suit supply suits take six weeks. Mine uh-huh. take two. Come right? on. I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's clear about that. Like yeah. suit supply can't do it. So I have my own company too. Do you know this man calls HR? Really? He calls corporate. He calls corporate. Like you some type of a complaint. Like him out. Yeah. Files a complaint, bro. He's like, yo, one of your um employees at suit supply has his own custom suit company and wow. he's trying to sell me on the side and blah blah blah. 
after I just spent two hours with this two man. Two hours with you not trying to pick nothing off the rock. Bro. Man, look. I go to work the next day. I get called upstairs. HR is on the phone. They're like, hey, uh-huh. we're going to open an investigation. Um, you know, it's probably a miscommunication. Like, we'll, we're going to clear you, blah, blah, blah. Man, wow. I quit that same day, bro. I quit that same day. I probably would have been cleared. I gotta I get my sister got the cause yeah. you know, got some place to go. Hey, yeah. come at, the, on. at the end and of that, that shift, bro, I said, I said I said I could. Yeah, and I never I never went back, bro. And at that time I had a hundred dollars in my pocket, bro. I had a wow. hundred dollars in my pocket and no clients. Wow. I so you just feel like you said scratch. you're never ready, you're never gonna be secure enough to know when to leave your job. But at the end of the day, you said I take a leap of faith just like you did. And you try to and you try to promote yourself. And then yeah. you know the guy trying to throw you under the bus. Yeah. But one thing I you have been, one thing you have been since then is consistent. And you're still you're still relevant to this day. What makes you relevant? What has made you relevant all these years? Like, because we think about suits now, think Man, about just, it. especially when it comes to guys. Yeah. We only buy suits. Like me, I, I buy a lot of suits when I was in college when I was Mr. Bowie and that type of thing. But right. a lot of men right. don't buy suits unless it's like a prom, you know, on special occasions. So how is it keeping yourself occupied and your business rolling when guys don't buy suits that much? Uh, great question. So the pandemic hit me yeah. hard, uh-huh. right? But, but, you know, as an entrepreneur, I believe how you pivot is how you prosper. Yes, sir. Okay? How you pivot is how you prosper. And so when COVID hit, like the business that I'm in, everything is made from scratch. And I have to physically touch you, mm-hmm. right? I have to physically put my hands on you to take your measurements. You know, mm-hmm. this is not something that we can do virtual. This is not something that we can do over Zoom. Like I have to be present. Yeah. And when the when the pandemic hit, man, and we went to stay on home orders, man, yo, overnight, dang, I lost twenty thousand dollars, dang, because all of I I had four flights mm-hmm. canceled. Um, I had six events canceled. All of my proms gone all of my weddings gone Gone. all my graduations gone overnight now mind you we we all started the year yeah man look look we we all started this year you know super motivated super aggressive so january i'm going hard february i'm going hard i'm doing better than i've ever done before bro and then overnight you know and so as a as an entrepreneur, what I want to say is, well, well, if anything, if, if COVID taught us anything, it's that I don't give a dang who you are, where you work, who your family is, how much money you make, that can be taken from you at any time. At any time. You can have an amazing nine to five with a six figure salary. It can be taken from you just like that. So working at men's warehouse, right? When COVID hit, yo, yeah, they they end up closing 650 stores. Damn. 650 stores and have to file for bankruptcy. Mm. Yo, just imagine how many people were unemployed because of that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But that's why I always tell people, even if you have a job, there's still something that you need to do on the side. Yeah. Bro, like, it does not, I don't care who you are. You got to have some sort of business some sort of investment opportunity. It might be the stock market. It might, might be real estate. But you got to have something. Yeah. Right? Because, like, like even just being in business, like, you can't be a one-trick pony. I can't just yeah. sell suits. Because what if the suits ain't moving? Yeah. That's why I get paid to do speaking engagements. If the mm-hmm. speaking engagements ain't moving, that's why I get paid to do social media marketing. If the social media marketing ain't moving, that's why I got my stock market. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't be a one-trick pony. When you talk you about multiple streams... Yeah, when you talk about multiple streams of income, black people think, oh, if I want to make more money, I need to work more jobs. And it's like, no, bro. Like, like when people have seven streams of income, they ain't working seven jobs. True, they have. They may income work income. one job, two jobs, but it's, yeah. Yeah, but the goal is residual. Okay. Yes, residual. residual. That's how yeah. you build wealth. Because these, these, yeah, I can hear you. Because these, yeah, these white people, bro, they're making money in their sleep. Yeah. They're making money in their sleep. They wake up and they up two bands. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I yeah. have to work for every dollar I make. Yeah. For every if I if I'm doing a custom suit, I'm working. If I'm doing social media marketing, I'm working. If I'm doing a speaking engagement, I'm working. If I'm traveling, I work. I have to physically be present. So mm -hmm. how I made it through COVID is finding things that make my money work for me. Yeah. That's how you build wealth. And even during COVID, around this time, you learn different trades. Like, there's so many things I'll be able to like, really, like touch up on, um, perfect on with my craft that I didn't really do or really wasn't that sharp on when everything was open. But I'm able to work on it now. But like you said, you hit that right on the point. You got to have different type of, you know, yes, you want to narrow it down to three because you don't want to do so many things with your minds over the place. Like you said, be a right uh, have different jacks different different trades different, be a jack of all trades but have three and like you said yours is speaking yours is inf uh, social media influencer yours is tailoring so why those three because i'm sure there's a lot of things you can do but what made you narrow it down to just those three no, I know those are, that's great question those are the three things that gave me the most return on investment okay listen being a jack of all trades is not a good thing mm -hmm. it is not let me be the one to tell you i don't care who tell you otherwise they lying like, mm -hmm. being a Dragon Ball Trace is not a good thing, bro, because you're a master of none. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to use a terrible example, but it's going to make sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. So if I'm, I'm not dating right now, not dating mm -hmm. anybody right now, but let's just say I'm dating someone, right? One yes. woman. She's going to get 100% of my time and attention. She's mm -hmm. going to get all of my energy. If I'm dating two women, now I have to split that time and attention in half. Mm -hmm. So she's going to get 50 and she's going to get 50. Or maybe I like her a little bit more. So she's going to get 75 and she's going to get 25, right? If I'm mm -hmm. dating three women, then I have to split my time in third. Do you see how, like, the attention becomes divided? Yes, and then you can't you're not, focus on one thing. And then you're not effective anywhere? Mm -hmm. That's how it is having multiple businesses. So at one point, I was doing social media marketing. I was speaking. I was doing styling. I was doing photography, videography, web design, Ooh. flyers. Man, I could, yeah, bro. I was really, but I wasn't, a, but I wasn't effective anywhere. Now <laughs> so, I'm a creative. I don't, I don't believe in that one thing principle. Uh -huh. Oh, you got to do one thing. No, bro, I cannot just do one thing. Uh -huh. But I don't think that you need to be doing ten things either. Uh huh. I so like you I, find said, three I said, I said what? I feel like if you find three things, one that you're focused on and you perfect it. And then the next one you're perfecting, yeah. and the third one. I think three is and three is cool. Three is cool. But so is that. <laughs> she said this. She said this is a bad example. That was a terrible example. You said, well, I feel he, like he, it he made sense. Disclaimer out first. I threw the disclaimer out. That was a terrible example. But <laughs> that's that. That's how. That's how it is having multiple businesses, man. So I had to sit down and look and say, hey, of the eight things I do, which mm -hmm. two or three things give me the most return on investment? And it was speaking, suits, and social media. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, bro, I'm outsourcing. Uh huh. Because outside of that, it's a waste of my time. Like mm -hmm. I'm very, I mean, not even on some like uh, ego stuff, but I'm I'm intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we can, so we can. So we. I'm saying, but we can learn to do these things. I can yeah. learn Photoshop. I can mm -hmm. learn how to take my own pictures. I can mm -hmm. learn how to build a website. I can yeah. learn these things. But is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? I can make $500 an hour selling suits. Mm -hmm. So if it takes me five hours to learn Photoshop. You're missing out bro, on that money. Bro, that's my, so that's $2,500 that mm -hmm. I just missed mm -hmm. when I could have just paid somebody $500 to do it. Because yes. now I can take those five hours and use it to focus on my business. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So like, how much is it costing you learning these new skills? I can make you it have, fire easy. And we have all this time right now. Like, when I'm at home, even though right now, you know, I'm not at my job, but I'm over here doing all day editing, brainstorming, planning. It's so many things because right now I'm working for myself. And I'm, yeah. I'm my own money maker right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Besides the other incomes that I have coming into, like, you know, unemployment and stuff like that. But right now, I got to make sure I get my bread and butter by focusing and perfecting my craft to get more income coming in. Right, right. And and, and let me point out this comment from my, my girl, Natasha. I make uh, money so I can free up my time and pay others to work for me. Come on. Listen, this is, this is what she's saying, right? So I do think... Mm -hmm. I do think that when you start a business, you should do everything. Mm -hmm. Like, taste every aspect of your business. Yeah, You do the shipping. You do the social media marketing. You do the content creation. 
you handle the appointments. Do everything, you know, taste all of it. That way, when you start to make money mm -hmm. and you're able to hire other people to yes, work sir. for you, you know what it's supposed to look like. Because now I have reference. Now I have perspective. So, because if you've never done it before, you don't know what the finished product is supposed to look like. You don't know how much it's supposed to cost. You don't know how long it's supposed to take because you've never done it. Like, as an entrepreneur, like, you don't have a big budget. Yeah, you, you don't. You really, you really got to do everything by yourself. Yeah. Now, I don't have the money to outsource unless I'm using something like Fiverr. But at the same time, the goal should be to get my business to a position where I can hire. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. And like you said, when it comes with money and, you know, the support and everything, when you first were getting started with suits, how was the support system? Because, you know, were a lot of men supporting you and wanting to buy suits? Because I know, like, your prices, when did you – my question is this. I would say this. When did you find out your worth? And when you found out your worth, how was the support? Oh, oh, listen. Oh, Jesus Christ. Know <laughs> your worth. First of all, let's talk about – Let's talk about discounting your uh discounting your worth. Yeah, okay. okay. That is that is that's the worst it. thing you can do, man. That's the worst thing you can do. Matter of fact, let's we're gonna break it down this way. Number oh, one, why you shouldn't discount your worth. People, and I'm talking about black people too, mm -hmm. not specifically, but black people too, but people don't appreciate shit they didn't pay for. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. They don't appreciate shit they didn't pay for, you know? So how I treat how I treat a hundred dollar suit is not how I'm gonna treat a thousand dollar suit. You know that hundred dollar suit, you take it off and you throw it on the floor and you ball it up and you do all of this stuff and you put it on a wire hanger. That thousand dollar suit, oh, you gonna take care of that joint? Uh huh. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's like the next day. Yeah, it's it's like it's like when your mom used to buy your clothes and then you start buying your clothes. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of these sneakers. Yes, I ain't sir. gonna beat them up. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? And so people appreciate what they pay for. People appreciate what they pay for. And the more they pay, the more value and worth they attach to it. That makes sense? Yeah. So that's number one, why you shouldn't, you know, um discount your products and services. Number two. And again, going into 2021, I'm uh -huh. not doing any discounts anymore because I did over probably ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of discounts this year. Wow, Ooh. bro, do you know what I could do with fifteen bands? I mean, come on, I love you know what any human would do. Man, I would run it. Do you know what I could do with fifteen bands, bro? And so you know, you know people I could do with one by. band, right? Right, with one band. <laughs> so when people come by. And they're like, yeah, man, uh, you tell them a suit of six, and they're like, yo, all I got is five. Okay. You know, so you give them a little $100 discount. Uh -huh. You know, somebody might come through and spend 2000 but yeah. say they only got 1600 So that's 400 right there. So in two sales, you didn't just discount $500. Mm -hmm. Just on two sales. Mm -hmm. So imagine multiplying that by 15 sales a month. This guy was, this guy's order was $1,000. Did it for... Eight fifty. This guy's order was eight thousand, but you did it for thirteen thousand. That stuff add up, bro. Yeah, it multiplies. That stuff add up, and 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 yeah. And what I want to say about that is that how you treat people is how they refer you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I need I need somebody to write that down. How you that's treat people is how I'm they here. refer I'm you. I'm learning that's, right now. Listen, I'm like, mm -hmm. That's a that's a commandment. So what I yeah. mean is, if you discount it for somebody. Yeah. Let's just say, you know, uh guy suit six hundred dollars and he say he only got five. That's what he's gonna tell his homies. Yeah. And so he's gonna say, yo, and spread the yeah. word. And so yeah. So he's gonna say, yo, hit this dude up for a suit. But like this is his price, you know what I'm saying? But if you oh, say you ain't that. got it, then he probably gonna work with you. Like even even when I was booking speaking engagements right years ago, mm -hmm. like people would come in, man, and they would ask me what's my rate. Uh -huh. I'd be like, yo, it's five hundred dollars an hour, and they would say, yo, all we got is three. I'd be like, okay, but then they would refer me to other schools, and then other schools, when I gave them my rate, would lowball me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They they wasn't saying they wasn't saying, yo, this is his price. They were saying, yo, if you say you ain't got it, he'll work with you. Yeah, uh -huh. that's tough, bro. Yeah, that's tough. 
Yep. So, so yeah. So you teach people how to treat you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's tough so, yeah. sometimes. And you, sometimes yeah. you know, out from the outside, people looking in, and they spit the world. Oh, he's that. He's hard to work with. He's this or that. But no. At the end of the day, you worked hard for what you created. You worked hard for your brand. So now respect yeah. my brand and how you right. treat people is how they refer you. That's how the you word. Treat is how they refer you, bro. That's that's dangerous, man. Yeah. That's 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 muddy water for real. Um, when you so yeah, your... 2021, no discounts, man. My price is my price. And I said, that's a hard thing sometimes when you are establishing your business and try to establish your brand and get clientele. Sometimes you got to really like put your foot down and know your worth and your value because eventually someone's going to understand. It's going to be that one person out there who's going to understand your value and your worth. Because I know your target audience, yeah. is, it, is it millennials? Is it young men or is it older people? No, nah, it's older guys, man. Like my, my clientele is between the age of, I would I would say thirty five and sixty, mm -hmm. but uh, how how old are you, bro? Right, I, I just turned twenty four. Oh damn! damn. <laughs> I know everybody Yay! thinks I'm older. Everybody thinks I'm older. I don't know why I thought we was around the same age, but I guess I'm mean, about, about like one one or two years. Yeah, well, I just turned twenty seven. Oh well, like three years. It don't matter. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I just turned 27. So I ain't that bad. But, uh, nah, yeah, like I hear you know. 20, 20, uh, yeah, I, I just turned 27, though, bro. Years you can but, work together. And the 30s are your rejuvenated 20s because now you're established a little bit. You can, you can, you know, get a lot of things. You can rent a car. You can do everything without, you know, having no co-sign or anything like that. You can live your life now in your 30s. But, yes, you but that was still man. young. Old is that until, like, in the yeah, 80s or 90s. Yeah, we got time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got time, man. But most of my, most of my clientele is older, man. They don't. They ain't tripping about price point. You know what I'm saying? They got six figure salaries. They love to dress. You know these guys ain't shopping at. And again, no, not. But they ain't shopping at H and M. They ain't shopping at Zara. They ain't shopping at Macy's. Like they've they've purchased custom suits before, so they know the product. They know the price point. They know the uh, process. How long they typically take. What fabrics they like. That's the type of person that I prefer to work with. You get to work with the Dallas Cowboys. Explain to us how that came about. Yeah, I'm in um I'm in Dallas now. So I've been I just made three years. Mm -hmm. Uh shout out Triple D. <laughs> um born and raised in Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey, shout out Louisiana. So, shout out Louisiana, you know, L. Uh I lived in Louisiana for thirteen years and then my dad's job relocated him to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So the entire family moved to Chicago. My mom, mm -hmm. my dad, my two sisters, and my brother. Uh, we all moved to Chicago, and I lived there for another twelve years. Yeah, so it was so I did twelve years in Louisiana, twelve years in Illinois, so twelve okay. years in Shreveport, twelve years Chicago. So then my mom, oh, what's up? We got smart from Louisiana representative. The 504. So, so my mom um, moved from Chicago to New Orleans uh -huh. and lived there for five years. But then she got a job in Dallas. Uh -huh. And so she gave, she gave me a call one day. Um, and she said, hey, I think Dallas would be a great city for you to live. And I was like, get the out of here. Like, bro, <laughs> like no. I'm, but, bro, I've never been to Dallas before. Like, wow. not even a visit. I don't but know anybody. But that was anybody. another leap of faith. Yeah, I don't know anybody. I don't know anything but you. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And so uh, I told her no, mm -hmm. you know, because Chicago, I had been in Chicago my adult life. So I went to high school in Chicago, college in Chicago. That's where I started my styling business. That's where I got my first job. That's where my network was. All of my friends were there. So I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to leave because essentially what you're telling me is that I'm going to have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. that's, that's essentially what you're saying. I'm going like to start over. Legal faith. Yeah, and so uh, I was having a conversation with my brother, and he was like, man, I think you should do it. Like, I really think you should move. I think Dallas would be dope. And uh -huh. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't know if I'm feeling that. He said, yo, if you go to Dallas and you hustle the same way you hustle here, bro, you're going to make it. Yep. And I was like, all right, the man. The sky is beyond the limit. Yeah, and my, and my brother drove trucks, right? Uh-huh. And so he was in uh he was in another state at the time. He said, Yo, I'm dropping off this load. You know, I'm I'm gonna come through to see you next week. I'm like, cool. Man, uh got in an accident oh. on the way home. Got in an accident on the way home. Mm 
mm-hmm. passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. And so after that, no, I appreciate it, man. So after that, man, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it for him. Mm-hmm. So I quit my job. I packed my shit, and I moved to Dallas eight days later. No plan, mm-hmm. no nothing, bro. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any friends, no networks, no, man. I was, my mom said, yo, you can sleep on my couch mm-hmm. until you figure things out. And that's what I did, bro. And like you said, and the I rest just, is history. And, and I just with, thumbed and it out, that's man. That's what I was saying. Like, you, you go there. A few a few months in, you working with Dallas Cowboys. Like how I would say, how yeah, that how like that about? Dallas Dallas is a social NFL team is a dream. <laughs> yeah, Dallas Dallas is a socialized city though, like yeah. like any other city. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's not just about what you know, but it's about who you know and who knows you. Mm. You know. So my goal when I got here was to meet as many people as possible. So I hit social media hard. Mm-hmm. I uh, I searched Dallas blogger. Start connecting with people. Dallas influencer. Start connecting with people. Dallas photographer. Dallas model. Dallas mm-hmm. barber. Dallas this. Dallas that. Like that is a great way to find people in your city. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Use those location specific hashtags. And then I got on Eventbrite, man, and I um I put Dallas Texas in, and you can search categories. Uh huh. So uh, whatever. Yeah, you can go to different answer. categories. Fashion, <laughs> real estate. Yeah. And so I made a priority to go to two events a week, mm-hmm. either paid or free. And then I met three people every week that I didn't know. Smart. I would follow people on social media and say, hey, you know, uh, my name is Jacob Clayton. I just moved to Dallas, Texas. Um, it looks like you have an amazing company. Um, and you know, some amazing people would love to, you know, grab coffee and get to know you, blah, blah, blah. I forgot what the fuck I said at the time. But, <laughs> but it that's, worked. That, yeah, but that's how I got to know everybody I know in Dallas. Man, I promise you, and this is not, again, ego. I can do whatever I want in Dallas. Mm-hmm. I can go wherever I want. You know what I'm saying? I don't pay to get anywhere. I don't stand in lines. I don't do none of that shit. I've, I've done more in Dallas than some people that have been here their entire lives. But it's because I made networking a priority. Get your ass out the house if you're yeah. trying to build a business. Yeah. You, know, like you can't build a business from the couch. And that's why last time we were talking, I was telling you that people rely too much on social media. Mm-hmm. Like it becomes a crutch. Like yeah. social media should be an addition or an extension of the work that you do offline. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be just the end all be all. Get out the house. Yeah. And, you know. When the world's open back. Yeah, when the world opens up.